In this video, I play Terraria, but here's the twist. Every time I damage an enemy, I gain experience that goes towards leveling up my whips. With each level increases the damage, size, and best of all, the number of whips I'm able to attack with. Things are about to get insane, so stay tuned to witness it. Alright, in order to get my hands on the first whip, I'm going to have to collect entries into the best Jerry. To do that, there are a couple of methods such as killing monsters, talking to NPCs, and as simple as walking near critters. But because I don't have a whip to start off with, killing monsters isn't an option. However, I can attack a monster once and then let an NPC finish it off, which would still count. Once I collect enough entries, which is 54, then the zoologist will be able to spawn and she'll have the leather whip in her shop. While I collect these entries, I'll of course be gathering materials and accessories. So to get started, let's chop down some trees for wood. Okay, about 200 pieces of wood is good enough. Plowed in a bottle. Okay, that's a pretty good accessory to start off with. I see some amethyst. Is this enough for a hook? 11. Okay, so we just need four more. I made it to the jungle, and I know there are a bunch of entries I can get from here. So let's break as many pieces of grass to find as many critters as possible. Oh, there's two gold chests down here. Band of regeneration. And Hermes boots. Oh, that is perfect. There are some rubies over there as well, so I can summon the king slime later, which is a really good source of experience. Oh, I just got a gravitation potion, which means I can go up to some sky islands for some more accessories. And since I'm in the jungle, it's the perfect opportunity to farm some jungle spores to make the snap thorn later on, since it doesn't require a weapon to get. Boy, that's a lot of rubies, actually. I have nine right now, so that means I can afford to make a hook as well, while having enough to make some king slime summons. Oh, found some feral claws. So once I do get my hands on some whips, this is going to increase the attack speed by a good amount. Oh, got the anklet of the wind. So I did find the aglet. That means I can make lightning boots later on. All right, this life crystal is going to bring my health to 200. Okay, found violent shoe spikes and this suspicious looking eye. So whenever I get enough life crystals and armor, accessories, all that, then I can just summon the Eye of Cthulhu. Okay, I got 300 health now. Five more to go until max health. Okay, just one more life crystal until max health. And there is the last life crystal. There we go. Okay, I think I've gotten everything that I've needed from the jungle. Let's head back home. And let's start building a little house to store my stuff away because my inventory is completely full. Okay, so I'll be crafting the full silver armor set because I've collected a lot of it. There we go. That's plus 13 defense now. Then I'm going to make the ruby hook as well as the platinum pickaxe. And as a quick update, let's just see how many entries I've collected into the bestiary. 21. So that's almost half the amount I need until the zoologist is able to spawn. But to collect some more entries, I'll be making some houses for some more NPCs to spawn. Alright, so I have 52 entries now. So what I'm thinking of doing to get my last two entries is to talk to the angler so I can find at either the left side or the right side of the ocean. And then I can probably get one of my NPCs to kill a demon eye flying around. And then after that, the zoologist will be able to spawn when morning comes again. There we go. Demon eye is dead. Now I have 53. Okay, let's go to the ocean now to talk to the angler. All right, that's 54. Oh my god, that is not good, guys. A goblin army is approaching and I don't even have my whip yet. Wait, does that mean that no NPCs can spawn during that event? Oh no, that's not good. Maybe if I get out of range, then the zoologist can spawn? Well, I'll give it a couple of minutes and see if the zoologist is able to spawn during the goblin army event. But if not, then... It's not all lost. I think I'll just release all of my NPCs and then they'll take care of the army for me. But that might take a very long time. 
Okay, it's been a little bit. And I really don't think NPCs are allowed to spawn when there's an event like the Goblin Army. So it's time to release the NPCs. Now, hopefully they don't die, because if they do, they are not allowed to respawn again. Oh, you know what? I actually have another alternative that I can do, which would be so much faster. I'm just going to make a bucket and collect some lava to use that to kill the goblins. And then let's put it down right here. Yeah, that is way faster. Okay, finally, the goblin army has been defeated. I am so glad that's over because I died a million times. And it just became nighttime again, so I do have to wait again for morning. And unfortunately, all of my NPCs pretty much died except the architect. Okay, it's finally daytime, so I guess while I wait for the zoologist to spawn, I can go down underground to search for the goblin tinkerer. Oh, and there he is. Okay, that didn't take too long. Let's buy the rocket boots and workshop. Then I can craft the specter boots and then turn that into lightning boots. The zoologist hasn't spawned yet, so I'm going to go drink a gravitation potion to find some sky islands for some more accessories. And I got the shiny red balloon. Second one, lucky horseshoe. And for the very last one, the Star Fury. Now with these three accessories, I can make the cloud in a balloon. And then into the blue horseshoe balloon. And there she is. Oh my god, that took forever. Okay, I can now buy the leather whip. There we go. Got my first weapon. With this, I'll be able to start killing some monsters now. So it's time to head into the jungle to farm some stingers and more vines to make the snapthorn. So to make it, all I need are 12 stingers, 3 vines, and 12 jungle spores that I've already farmed. Let's also keep track of the damage this whip has before I start leveling it up. So it has 14 summon damage. Okay, a few more hits and my leather whip should be at level 1. There we go. So, at level 1, it gained 1 additional summon damage. Okay, got enough stingers now. Let's head back home. And let's craft the Snapthorn. Beautiful. So this weapon has a much further reach, 4 extra damage, and every time I attack an enemy, it increases my attack speed, which means the faster I attack, the faster I gain experience. But now having this weapon, I am capable of taking on my first boss, which is going to be the King Slime. Let's head over to the Corruption to make some slime crowns. Let's make two, and let's get started. Yeah, this weapon attacks really fast. Okay, almost done here. 200 more health. And you're finished. Let's clean up the rest of these slimes for as much experience as possible. Alright. So from level 0 all the way to level 2. Almost to level 3. So now it has 20 summon damage. And during the fight, I did notice I was able to throw out two whips at the same time. It's not 100% yet. But a few more levels should make it guaranteed. And swinging out two whips means doubled the experience. I do have one more slime crown, so let's summon the king slime one more time. There we go. Okay, let's see. Level 4. So it does throw out two whips 100% of the time now. That is very nice. And before I dive too deep into the game, I grabbed myself a DPS meter, just so I can keep track of my damage throughout the game. The next boss that I was about to fight was going to be the Eye of Cthulhu, but since it did turn daytime, I am going to skip it for now and go straight to the Eater of Worlds. But before I go, let's just reforge this and see what I can get. Okay, I'll take Godly. Oh yeah, and this weapon can poison enemies too. Okay, arena is complete. Let's go break some shadow orbs now. Alright, here we go. 
And I just know that this weapon is going to destroy the Eater Worlds. Oh my god. Yeah, that poison damage? That's a lot. That's all going to stack up. Okay, it's already at 50% health, and I'm dealing about 300 damage per second. Not including the poison, by the way. Oh my god, I'm just shredding this thing. And you're finished. So out of the pre-hard mode bosses, this one has the most health. So I'm very excited to see how many levels I've gained. From level 4 all the way to level 7. I'm just going to say level 8 because it's at 94%. Oh my god, it has 28 summon damage now. Oh, I can summon out 3 as well. Oh, it's tripled the damage, which means triple the experience. That is so nice. And I can summon it once more because there are three more shadow orbs right here. I don't have any more bombs though to break through the Evanstone. So I'm going to go back home to make the Nightmare Pickaxe. There we go. And do I have enough to make the full shadow armor? Let's see. Nope, I'm just missing a few more bars to make the helmet. But let's just equip what I've got for now. Here we go. Second time now. Yeah, that was way faster. Okay, let's see. Level 10 now. So I gained two more levels. I now have enough materials to complete the shadow armor. I just want to see if I can attack with four whips now. There we go. That's four. Right there. Oh my god. So it's about 50% chance to hit three times and then the other 50% chance to hit four times. But attacking on just a single target deals about 250 damage per second. I see that it is night, so let's not waste this opportunity to summon the Eye of Cthulhu. Here we go. Oh my god, that health bar is going down so fast. Second phase already. 500 more health. And you're dead just like that. Nah, that was way too fast. I do have two more, so let's just summon them all out. Okay, one more to go. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. No. I didn't realize it was almost morning. Oh, that's a shame. But I did raise it up by another level, so that's all right. The next boss that I'll be taking on is Skeletron. So let's head over to the dungeon to make the arena. Arena is all done. Now let's wait until nighttime. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh my god, that hand just got destroyed. A few more hits to do it. Come on. That's one. And that's two. Just the head now, which is the easiest part. Especially when it does this attack. There we go. Skeletron has been defeated. But now that I have access into the dungeon, it's time to get my hands on my next whip, which is going to be the Spinal Tap. And it's made from 90 bones and 55 cobwebs. I'll also be looking for the Cobalt Shield. And there it is. And I've collected enough bones, so let's make the Spinal Tap. I will be keeping the Snap Thorn just because every time I attack an enemy, it can raise my attack speed. So combine that with the Spinal Tap being really good against multiple targets, it's going to be quite a strong weapon. Now all that's left to do is to take on the Wall of Flesh. So let's go mine down to hell. Okay, finally made it to hell. Oh, and I just got an Obsidian Sin Potion. So that's going to help with mining Hellstone a lot better. I won't be mining a lot though. All I'll be making is the Molten Pickaxe. Okay, that's enough. Got 123. 
Now let's try to find a voodoo demon so I can get the guide voodoo doll to summon the wall of flesh. Oh, there's one. There we go. Let's go level up this spinal tap a bit before I take on the wall of flesh. So let's summon out the Eye of Cthulhu. That's one. And that's two. Okay, from level zero to level two. That's not the level I thought it was going to get to, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is go back to the dungeon to kill some monsters because I know the spawn rate there is pretty good. And once I get it to about level 6, then I'll go back down to hell to take on the Wall of Flesh. Okay, it's at level 6 now. Let's go take on the Wall of Flesh. Let's get this thing started. 3, 2, 1. Okay, we're dealing about 600 damage per second. That's not too shabby. And we're getting rid of the Hungries pretty easily too. So this boss shouldn't be a problem. About 50% health left. Okay, let's run back a little bit further. Oh yeah, there we go. One more hit. Oh, nice. Now there are only two things that I'm looking for in this treasure bag. Number one is the firecracker, and number two is the summoner's emblem. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, no way. I got both of them. Wait, I got so lucky. Okay, I'll take it. So the firecracker has 37 summon damage, and after equipping the summoner's emblem, it has 42. And the slip is able to set enemies on fire. Let's now make the molten pickaxe. And then let's head over to the corruption to break some demon altars to spawn in the hard mode ores. So we've got cobalt, or calcum, and adamantite. Okay, that's enough cobalt. Let's make the cobalt pickaxe and then move on to ore calcum. That's enough ore calcum. Ore calcum pickaxe made. And lastly, the adamantite. And that should be enough adamantite. Since there isn't an armor set that gives summon damage, I'll just be making the melee armor set, just because it gives a lot more defense. So from a measly 29 defense, all the way to 60. And with the set bonus, it does give us 20% more increased melee speed. So yeah, we're talking a lot faster compared to the shadow armor. Next up, we'll be getting enough souls of flight to make some wings. So let's head up to some sky islands to kill some wyverns. Oh, and that is exactly enough. There we go. I think I'm all set to take on the mechanical bosses now, but seeing that it is 1 a.m. already, I think I'm just gonna wait until the next night to do it. So in the meantime, I'll be leveling up my firecracker to as high of a level as possible. Okay, it's 7 p.m. That means nighttime just began. And my firecracker is now at level 15. So yeah, it has gotten pretty strong now. So let's head back home. And the first mechanical boss that I'll be taking on will be the destroyer. Okay, let's begin. Let's run all the way to where the clumped up part is. Oh yeah, there we go. That was 4,000 damage per second. But on average, we're dealing about 2,000. That's still really good. Let's clear some of these probes out. Okay, there's a stand elemental here too. I should probably go back to the left here. About 20% health left. Oh, now I'm dealing 2,500 damage per second. Wait, I'm very curious. How many levels did I get from this? So from level 15... Oh my god. Level 22. I legit gained 
a whole seven levels from that. I can't even count how many I'm whipping out now. That's got to be at least seven right there. And on a single target, oh my god. Around 1,700 damage per second. Okay, moving on. Let's open up our treasure bag. So, we have some hollowed bars now. Which means I can make the Durendal. Which is basically an upgraded version of the Snapthorn. It increases attack speed whenever I hit an enemy. So, let's test it out. Normal attacks. Just like that. Then we hit once with the Durendal. Yeah, that is way, way, way faster. There's still a whole lot of time in the night, so let's summon our next mechanical boss, the Twins. Three, two, one. Oh, and luckily my firecracker is long enough to reach the boss. Second phase already. Okay, I have to be careful of the cursed flames. That's done. Just the Retinator now. Second phase with this one as well. Oh my god, I'm strong. And for the last boss, I think there is plenty of time to beat Skeletron Prime. Here we go. And for this fight, I'll be taking out all of its arms for the maximum experience gain. Okay, laser's done. Prime saw and vice are down. One more to go. Oh, got a bit too close there. And there goes the cannon. Okay, it's just the head now. All finished. Okay, let's check out our firecracker. Level 24. Almost to level 25. So we're dealing about 2,000 damage per second. Now that I have all three souls of the mechanical bosses, let's make the pickaxe axe. And I was just about to make some hollowed armor, but I've realized that I don't have enough. I think I'm missing just one bar, which is very unfortunate. Now before I go to the jungle to try to find the plantera bulb, I will be getting my hands on another whip, which is going to be the cool whip. And it's actually the perfect opportunity right now because it is raining, which means there is a blizzard in the snow biome. So let's quickly head over there right now and try to find an ice golem to kill for its frost core. Here we are. And yep, there is a blizzard going on right now. Oh, here's an ice golem. And there is the frost core as well as the ice feather. Okay. Let's take out our Souls of Light, Night, and Flight, so that I can make the Cool Whip and the Frozen Wings. Okay, let's go level this bad boy up. But for this whip, every time I attack an enemy, it does summon out a Snowflake, which follows the enemy dealing damage. And it can inflict Frostburn, which deals 10 damage per tick. So it's a much better weapon than the Firecracker for sure. Okay, well, I found the Pantera Bulb, so I guess I'll make the arena right here. Okay, the arena is now all complete. I think this size should be good enough. However, I will not be summoning Pantera just yet, because my Cool Whip is still at level 6, which is a bit low for my liking. So I'm going to level it up just a bit more before I start. Okay, I think that should be good enough. My Cool Whip is now at level 11. So without further ado, let's begin. And the first phase is always the easiest. Just gotta fly around in circles, and the attacks will basically never hit. Okay, second phase. Almost done here. 5,000 more health. Oh, a bit too close. And you're dead. Now that I have defeated Plantera, there will be stronger monsters that 
start spawning in the dungeon. And some of the monsters there have a chance to drop the Morning Star Whip, which is the next whip that I'll be going for. Once I get that, then I'll head back to the jungle to take on Golem. All right, and I almost forgot. Let's check out the level on the Cool Whip and see how many I've gained from Pantera. Level 14. So I gained three levels then. Wow. Oh, there's the Morning Star. 206 damage. But because of its high damage, it is a lot slower when it comes to attacking. But honestly, this isn't too bad at all. Okay, well, this can replace our Cool Whip now. But oh man, once I start leveling this thing up, it is game over. Let's make our way to the temple now to take on Golem. Okay, I've made it to the boss room. And from what I can see, this is a pretty good size. And then a single platform is good enough. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Three, two, one. Okay, it's at level three and it's already dealing 2,000 damage per second. Wait, it just shot up to 3,000 damage per second now. What? Okay, but single target damage is about 1,200. Almost done here. There we go. Golem has been defeated. I have three more power cells, so I'm just going to use them all up and then see where my Morning Star is at. And we're all done. Okay, so from level 4 all the way to... Oh my god, level 13. So it has increased by 9 levels. That is insane. I also forgot to reforge this, so let's do that right now. Ooh, there we go. I'll take deadly on it. And now we're dealing- Oh my god! 3,000 damage per second. Okay, we're nearing the end, guys. So I'll be getting my hands on two more whips. One being the Dark Harvest from the Pumpkin Moon event, and the second one being the Kaleidoscope from Empress of Light. Alright, it's finally nighttime. Let's begin the Pumpkin Moon. There it is. There is the Dark Harvest. Okay, we're gonna replace our Durendal with it. Oh my god, that is so fast. That is so much faster than the Durendal. Oh my god. Okay, the Pumpkin Moon has finally ended. Oh boy. I can't wait to check out my Morningstar. Oh! Oh my god. Level 27. I was killing those pumpkins like they were nothing. Let's check out our DPS on this dummy. Here we go. Oh my... That is... Mm, 6,000 damage per second. And that 6,000 damage is without the Dark Harvest buff. So realistically, I think we're going to be looking at about 7,000 to 8,000 damage per second. Surely there's some spooky wood lying around, right? Come on, anymore, anymore. Oh, here's some. Yes, there we go. Now that is enough to make the spooky leggings. All right, so each piece gives 11% summon damage. So total will be 33% from 234 summon damage to 338. That is over a hundred damage increase. Wait, and our set bonus increases our summon damage by an additional 25%. So in total, that would be 58% summon damage. Okay, now let's go check out our damage. 3, 2, 1. Oh no. That is 8,000 damage per second. Which then means with our Dark Harvest, it would be like 10,000 damage. All right, let's go get my hands on the last whip, the Kaleidoscope. Oh, there's the Prismatic Lacewing. Give me that. Wait. Oh, I accidentally summoned it. 
I was not ready. Oh god. Okay, I got this in the bag though. No problem at all. Hopefully. So now it's more health. And it's done. Okay, I don't know why I was so worried about that fight. So if I don't get it from this treasure bag, I can always summon it again. Here we go. Please, 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 please. Okay, it looks like I'll be doing it again. Okay, please. There it is. 343 summon damage. I cannot wait to level this thing up. I know it's sad, but it's time to let go of our Morning Star. You have served me very well. But it is at level 30, so I'm just going to show it off one more time. That is insane. So to level this thing up really quickly, I'm just going to summon the Destroyer twice. And hopefully it can get to at least level 8. Here we go. Oh my god. Wait a minute. Oh, oh. 12,000 damage per second. So just from defeating the destroyer once, it's at level 6. Okay, one more time. Go, 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 go. Oh my god. I didn't even hit the clumped up part, and it's dealing 16,000 damage per second. Which brings me to level 10. Let's go take on the Lunatic Cultist now. Let's begin. Okay, about 3,000 damage per second. And the real one's right here. Okay, all done. Nebula Pillar down. Bullet Pillar is down as well. Okay, the Vortex Pillar has been destroyed. Just one more to go. And from destroying those three pillars, my Kaleidoscope is now at level 22. This thing almost has 400 summon damage. Alright, last pillar has been destroyed. Which will bring our total to level 26 at 400 summon damage. It is now finally time for Moonlord. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh my god. 10,000 damage per second. What? Okay. That hand's done already. Can we kill it before it shoots out that laser? Yes, we can. Okay, that hand's done. Just the core. Oh my god. Absolutely destroyed. Alright, that's going to be it everyone. Thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, comment on what other mod or video ideas I should try out, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Also, a big shout out to the creator of this mod for making it. I am having an absolute blast playing it. Anyways, I'll see you all next time. Peace!